Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ross with a quick video on some pointers to get us off to a good start in the lab. Okay, so I'm gonna start sharing my screen and we're immediately gonna start looking at um, how to take lab measurements and report them correctly and, and how not to at least we'll point out how not to, we won't practice how not to. Um, but precision in single measurements. So I think this is crucial. This is something that, especially in an online case as, as is happening now because of this COVID-19 pandemic, um, because I won't be in the lab catching it as you do it, because you'll be doing lab simulations at home. I think it's crucial that I can get ahead of it right now and tell you what to avoid. Okay. It's not enough to use a tool to take a measurement. <clears throat> you have to use the tool, take your measurement, and declare your confidence in your ability to take a measurement with that tool. So we take single measurements with measuring devices, which come in two broad flavors. We can have analog tools, and we can have digital tools. Digital tools have a digital readout. Analog tools don't and we'll see examples of, of both in a second. Um, I have separate videos, which I'll try not to duplicate here, but I'll refer you to, where I'll show you how to, um, how to determine the absolute uncertainty. We'll just use it here in this video, but in other videos, I show you how to uh, determine the absolute uncertainty. And then I'll show you in another video how to combine absolute uncertainties into combined errors. So when making a measurement with um, an analog tool, you need to determine the absolute uncertainty and record to plus or minus the absolute uncertainty. So let's have a look. So for example, here, uh, we have uh, some kind of shell. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what type of shell that is. Pearl shell, I'm not sure. And an analog tool, a ruler. We know it's an analog tool because there's no digital display. There's just markings on, a, on an object and I've got to interpret what those markings mean. So first thing I need to do before I record the value, uh, I need to know what the absolute uncertainty is. So again, I'm just gonna go through this. There's a, a slower version of this on how to do it in another video. But I'm gonna determine the absolute uncertainty for this Tool. Now the tool comes in two halves. I'm gonna look at the, the top scale. So the top scale of this tool. <clears throat> then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, let's see. The increment is going to be, uh, the increment is this little distance here. So it's going to be, um, let's see, six minus five centimeters. So difference between two lines over the number of lines between them. So one centimeter over 10, which is 0.1 centimeter. That's the increment. <clears throat> the increment implies the tens family. Again, you can look at another video on that. I'm not gonna duplicate it here. So the absolute uncertainty for this top scale is the increment over the family, which is 0.1 centimeter divided by 10, which is 0 0.01 centimeter. So I know that that top scale can read to two decimal places as shown, and it reads to plus or minus 0.1 centimeter. So the error here would be plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeter. Okay, <clears throat> so that means if whoever measured the shell and they reckon it's uh, four, it's less than 4.1, but it's close to 4.1, they've estimated 4.09. And, but because of the error in the, in the tool, they have no right to say it's not 4.08. So 
4.08 uh, with this tool, with this uncertainty, is the same as 4.09, right? Because it's within the error. Now, you might say, okay, what about 4.07? Well, then you'd start to see the line move further away from the 0.1 line. So we're saying that there's an error, but we're still being reasonable about how close we can argue our numbers. Okay, so that's that. And then the bottom scale, the bottom scale, they reckon it's only one decimal, so let's see. We'll take the distance between numbers here, so let's take the same six minus five. So the increment, in this case, I'm looking between two adjacent numbers, six minus five. Six minus, but I can, let's see, rather than scribble, I think I can actually erase. Yeah, so rather than scribble, let's be sophisticated and erase. Okay, so I've got six minus five centimeter. But now there are, uh, well, there's really only one mark in between them. If I'm on the five, there's just like one lump between them. So that would be uh, one centimeter over one, which is uh, one. And this would imply the tens family F. So the absolute uncertainty on the bottom scale is the increment over the family, which is one centimeter divided by 10, which is 0.1 centimeter. Okay, so with the bottom scale, same device, but different scale on the device, I'm only good for one decimal. So this would be plus or minus 0.1 centimeter. So it really matters not only what tool you use, but what's, what scale within the tool you use. And before you measure anything, you have to declare um, the absolute uncertainty before you measure it because the absolute uncertainty tells you how many numbers to put in your measurement. This is the origin of significant figures in measurements. Because as you can see, by going through the process of absolute uncertainty, again, it's in another video, please look for that uh, on my channel. Um, if I use the bottom scale, then I've, I, I know it's not quite, well, I, I have no idea, but I know it's close to four, but it's more than four, so I, I guess 4.1, but because of the, the scale is only good to 0.1 centimeter. I've got no right to say anything other than 0.1. Is it 0.2? It looks too close to four to be 0.2, so I'm pretty confident it's 0.1. But if I use a better tool with more markings, I'm able to see a bit more detail. I'm able to be a bit more confident and say, do you know what? It's not 0.1, it's 0.09 or 0.08. Um, so it really matters the quality of what you can say in science hinges on the quality of the instrumentation that you use. Now, if you're in the lab, if we have our COVID vaccine and everyone goes back to campus and you're in the lab, uh, you are bound by the instrumentation you're given in the class. However, if your instructor says, go pick a tool, you should then look for, okay, I want to look for the, the tool that's going to give me the best absolute uncertainty. That would be on you in like a lab practical, for example. In uh, the environment we're in now, uh, where we're, unfortunately, we have to use these lab simulations and make the best, best of it. You're going to have to use the tool that's in the simulation, but you're going to have to report following the correct procedures. So for example, 
your procedure in a lab simulation might say, uh, measure a shell to the nearest what have you. But if you know that, if you can see the tool like I can see this ruler now, and you know the proper way to calculate absolute uncertainty, you would be required, at least in my class, uh, and I, I have no doubt in every class, to follow the absolute uncertainty rules and report the measurement to that much. Um, so typically what you see in these lab simulations, it'll say, for example, uh, take a four centimeter shell. But you don't write down four centimeter, you measure the shell that you picked. And if you use the top scale, you'd say a 4.09 centimeter shell. If you use the bottom scale, you'd write a 4.1 centimeter shell. And then I'd ask you, why didn't you use the top scale? So that type of thing. Okay, so please be mindful of that. Um, you're going to use balances in these simulations. You're going to use, I have no doubt, a mixture of top pan and analytical balances. And these are digital tools. We don't need to, do, well, we do need to figure out the absolute uncertainty, but the good news is it's given to you. That's the last digit on the tool. Um, so again, analog tools, it's not given to you on a silver plate. You have to figure it out. Um, digital tool, it's given to you on a silver plate. So why is the absolute uncertainty here? Why is it plus or minus 0 0.01? Well, you can see from the readout here, that's just the last digit. The last digit can be one, two, three, four. So it's plus or minus 0 0.01. And likewise, on the analytical balance, the last digit here, uh, we've essentially got four objects after the decimal. So that's the absolute uncertainty here. Regardless of whether you have a digital tool or an analog tool, you're going to have to report absolute uncertainty. Uh, and this is for a single measurement. Now, oftentimes you'll have to take more than one single measurement and then take the difference or the average. And there are different things you'll have to do in that case. And I've made a video on combining absolute uncertainties. Um, so for example, if you measured the volume, sorry, if you measure the length on this, on the ruler, and then you measure the mass and you were going to calculate the density somehow, how would you combine the errors? Do you take the smaller of the two? Do you, you know, do I cube the length because I need the length cube to make the volume? How do I do it? Look at my video. Um, that, that will tell you how to do it, but you certainly don't just combine them in a non-trivial trivial way. Okay, um, I think that's all I wanted to say. I'm not gonna read, the, so please go through these PowerPoint slides. I've posted them to the Canvas, uh, Canvas shell. Um, I merely just wanted to raise your awareness to the fact that uh, there's what a procedure says in a lab or a simulation, and then there's what you have to do as a scientist to keep track of the importance of measurements. So please be very mindful of that. Um, students will tend to lose points if they don't, you know, this is the skill that we're looking for. Um, so again, not to hog the point, but procedure says weigh out four grams of a chemical. If you just write four grams in your data sheet, um, that definitely says something about your skill level. If you then realize that, oh, do you know what? I use this tool to measure four gram. I'm gonna write 4.0000 or whatever it said. That says that you're awake and you're, you're, um, you're following the rules properly and you're, you're aware that it matters. That's it, that's what I'm trying to say. You, you have to show awareness that you know what matters. And what matters is declaring to the absolute uncertainty of the tool. So before I forget to write something down, I'm gonna say, always report measurements, oh, measure 
statements to uh, the absolute uncertainty of the tool being used and so for example you would give a value to two decimals let's say the let's say um let's say you use the top hand balance here which we know is good to plus or minus 0.1 gram then you would give whatever the value was to plus or minus 0.1 gram uh, you give it to two decimals here, sorry, because of the two decimal rating of this tool. And then you would say, and I'll, I'll show you exactly how to report it now. You wouldn't put the unit there. You would record it, and then you would say plus or minus whatever it was. And you put the unit right at the end. So if you can pull this off, early on in chemistry, and I don't see why you can't if, if it's being raised to your awareness now, that would be the sweet spot. That is exactly what is being looked for. And when your chemistry grade is on your transcript, this is what it says that you can do. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's wrap this up so it doesn't get too long. Okay, so we'll call this a day on this video.